everyone. I'm John Evans. Welcome to a brand new episode of One on One. Legendary comedian Jay Leno is back on TV again with a new show. It's an updated version of You Bet Your Life, the show where contestants can win cash by answering a series of questions. Now, Jay's going to be joined again by his longtime friend, Kevin Eubanks. Kevin joined the Tonight Show band in 1992 when Jay took over for Johnny Carson. And then Kevin later led the band for more than a decade. I had the chance to talk with both Jay and Kevin about the new show, which you'll be able to see weekdays at 2 on Fox Wilmington. Jay and Kevin, welcome to the One on One with John Evans podcast. Well, thanks. Thanks for having us. Good to be here, Jay. How did it come about that you two are uh, working together again? Well, uh, I, I had an idea to, to reboot this show, and the only person I wanted with me was Kevin, and I said, you want to do it? He said, yes. And... Uh, Fox liked the idea. I mean, the studio liked the idea. There was no, it, it, it just seemed like a natural pairing. And uh, it, 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 it turned out to be exactly that. It worked out great. It worked out really good. We have a, you know, we have a chemistry. He's a jazz musician. I'm a comic. And comedy and jazz sort of have a similar theme in that the audiences listen. When I started out, there were no comedy clubs. I used to play jazz clubs. And jazz audiences always paid attention to the words, like to do the notes, you know. And the same thing with, with music. So, uh, Kevin, Kevin was just a, a member of the band when we started, but he was the guy I would always just naturally go to or react to. And then we moved on to band leader. And then it was like, and then the rest is pretty much history. We remained friends all along and we do stuff together off screen and things like that. So it's, it just seems natural. It makes it kind of easy once we get each other's instinctive way of, you know, feeling each other's rhythm and how to talk to each other or talk to contestants and, things like that. But the same as uh, if you're playing with uh, musicians that you're used to, you may not work with them for a year or two years or something like that. But when you get back together, the same things are always there because you kind of play off of each other and you kind of trust each other what to do. So all of that works into the, uh, the show and it just develops and develops and it just gets better and better. For those of us who are, uh, let's say, more experienced and remember the old Groucho Marx version of You Bet Your Life. Is right. this going to remind us of the old show? Uh, well, yeah, I think it will in the sense that the current version of The Tonight Show reminds you of Steve Allen and Jack Park. I mean, there's a certain formula to doing these, a desk, a chair, a band, a microphone. <laughs> you know, that's really all you need. And it's the most basic form of human communication, you know. Uh, I like the Groucho show because people, are, and, and you're just talking. There's no tricks here. There's no gimmicks to it. It's just human interaction, which is not something we see a lot of anymore. Everybody's on Twitter or email. And the idea that you're actually having a conversation with people almost seems revolutionary. The thing that's really sold the show is the fact that there's no politics. Uh, I found that nothing divides an audience or a Thanksgiving or a Christmas more than the politics people just at each other you know people normally would have a wonderful time and have a lot in common politics just seems to throw a wrench in that whole thing and if you don't discuss it or bring it up it's great and i can see on the show okay this is a different type of person oh but you realize we all have more in common than we have that separates us and i think that's the fun part here when you see a you know this the, you had the six foot six african-american guy he was teamed up with a, a lady about 75 with white hair. She may be five one. And she like came up to his elbow and she's like, oh no, I think the answer is this. And and he, he's talking to her like she's a, a raggedy animal. She's like, <laughs> and, 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 have this, and it was just a funny thing to watch. But the, the real joy of it was just the interaction. He generally cared for this lady and was being nice to her and she liked him and they got along. And that's what, I mean, when I turn on the news all the time now, I just see people that, don't get along for whatever reason. It's, somebody's yelling or fighting, and it's amazing uh, how a smile can really pretty much change everything. And when the contestants walk out and Kev smiles at them, I smile at them, they smile back, all the ice melts and they all break down. And it, and it becomes just a nice interaction. It's really a fun, fun show to do. Now, you're going to be doing a comedy monologue, I guess, before the Q&A. Right. Uh, is that going to be different? You know, when you were on The Tonight Show, you had the daily events that you could come out and talk about. No, this is sort of evergreen stuff. We, we bring back a lot of the elements 
the headlines, some funny videos. Uh, Kevin has a true fact segment, which is pretty funny. Uh, it's not po anything that's not politics. <laughs> and that'll be about two and a half minutes. Just, you know, we, we just want to make sure there's a laugh every six to nine seconds. That's kind of the way you do it as a stand up. You got up there and you just make sure the audience, it's like spinning plates on the Ed Sullivan show. And then, and then, and then, you just try to, you try to keep the thing going. It's why we don't have any musical numbers because it just takes too long. You know, you just want to keep the show moving. It's fast paced. It's funny. It's a half hour. It comes on in between the news after watching people throwing rocks at each other on the news. You see, oh, look, they're coming together. And, you know, it really has an effect on people because we have a studio audience. And I, we, I asked them during the breaks, what do you like or don't like about the show? And everybody likes the fact that, oh, just seeing people who you wouldn't think would have anything in common, getting along and laughing at something and having fun. And, and that really works. Kevin, you're gonna be doing music for this. Jay said you're not gonna have musical numbers. So what kind of assignment is this as you develop the theme and, and what will the musical aspect of this be as opposed to the Tonight Show when you were doing numbers and introing guests and, and that material? Well, all the music that I would write for the show becomes from, it, it comes from being a part of the show. You start to feel what the show is like. So you want to write music that complements that, that brings all of that out. It kind of, kind of glues things together and it's something that people can hear as soon as they hear the theme song, they know what the show is. It gives you some identity about what the show is. So all of that is something that I'm used to doing. And at the same time, you realize that you use your creativity in, in different ways, the way you talk to people, the way the um, contestants, you know, talk to you. There's a, one, a woman that came on and I saw in the notes that uh, when we were finding her, that she was an opera singer. And uh, so during the break, I said, when we come back, if you have an answer to uh, you know, a question to, to win some money, sing the answer instead of just saying it. And when he came back, she kept this beautiful operatic voice that came out of it out of nowhere and people loved it. So if you listen to people, give them a chance to be themselves. And she, she was so much brighter after that because it was an acceptance thing and it was nobody, it came out of nowhere. So a lot of times you use your um, musical instincts to somehow contribute to the show. That's a good thing. Yeah, plus Kev is a co-host. So he interacts with the guests. He finds the, I, the show of Kev, who you found today? Oh, I got this guy, he's a Santa Claus who moonlights as a stripper and a woman who collects salt and pepper shake. Oh, well, excellent work, Kev. You know, that kind of thing. You know, and, and, and so there's a lot of interplay like that. And I would love to write a song for Santa that is a stripper at night. I could come up with something good for that. <laughs> I, I, I bet you could. Jay, I heard you in some interviews say that this is going to be like the old Jay walking segments. Right. Back then and in this show, do you have to be careful and walk a line that you don't embarrass people too much, that you that you have some fun with it, no, but something. you don't crucify them? Yeah, well, in 22 years of doing The Tonight Show, we talked to thousands of people uh, we never got a letter saying, oh, I was embarrassing, humiliated. We don't edit it to make the people look dumber or do any, you know, on reality shows, that's the biggest complaint. I never said that. I said that about this and they put the thing together. No, we don't do anything like that. This it pretty much, the contestants come out, start to finish, that's what they say. And yeah, we're not out there to, we like them to be in on the joke. You know, to me, when you ask someone who is the first president of the United States and they go, Abraham Lincoln, you no, know, you know, I'm sorry, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know, it's really not. When you get somebody over here, it's just, oh, George Washington, yes, that's right. You know, I, 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 for something happens to people when a camera goes on. They seem to go blank a lot of times, which is funny. But we don't, you know, we never try to find, for example, a homeless guy or someone who looks put upon and embarrass them. You want people who are happy with their lives and successful and they're there to have fun and they volunteered to come on the show. People always say that, they go, oh, I watch your show. Those people you talk to, they're so stupid. Yeah, they are, they are. Uh, who's the president of the United States? Oh, uh, was it Ben Franklin? No, no. no. <laughs> yeah, I, and you go, okay. You know, so no, that, that's not a problem. We've never had a situation where someone is humiliated or is in tears. And if that was the case, we would edit it out. We're not here to hurt people. 
Jay, you mentioned when the camera comes on. Kevin, can you tell us, is Jay the same here as he is on the air? Is he the same backstage as he is on the air? Are we seeing the same guy that you see when the cameras aren't rolling? I don't, I don't smoke crack on the air. <laughs> no, no, I you don't want to do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I think we're both the same. I think that that's, that's what makes it, you know, that's the fun part about being a comedian. I have friends of mine that are on like medical shows and people stop on the street. Could you look at this scar? And they go, no, I'm not really a doctor. I know you're not, but you know, could you just look at, you know, when you're a comedian, they come up, they ask you about cars or they ask you about Kevin or something like that. So it's never an uncomfortable situation. So I think the thing that makes it work is we both are the same people on and off, off the screen. And it makes it easier to, to work together and come up with things right off the cuff if we're talking to contestants or just talking to, you know, the two of us on camera. Um, the consistency of knowing who Jay is and him knowing me after, what, 30 years now, um, you know, knowing each other and working together, that we kind of, you know, trust each other. And it just, you know, just when you make friends with someone and after a while, I mean, when is that moment when you meet somebody and when did they become friends? I mean, what it didn't happen like in a specific time thing, but it just develops that way. And after a while, you start to be a little bit freer of where you talk about things and you can talk about a lot of things, even if, you know, the things are funny or real funny. After a while, you just get used to having the laughter, the comedy and being able to communicate with each other that way. And when contestants come on, and they feel that, I think that makes them feel a lot more at ease. And it also helps when you have great writers and a great producer <laughs> to do it, that all helps everything flow um, at the same time. So it's all coming together really, really nice. Jay, when are you not gonna work again? Every time I turn around, you've got a new show somewhere. Oh, well, I mean, I, I, I assume probably when I have a stroke. <laughs> Thanks. People always say, well, what are you working? Well, I, I like to, you know, if it's your hobby and you enjoy it, it's not work. Yeah. I mean, I like writing jokes. It's just, I, I, I'd be trying them out in the guy at the garage. Hey, is this funny? Hey, is this funny? And now I just get to try them out on TV. So, no, it, it, it's it's a great job. It, it, you know, comedy's like golf. You can do it through 80 if you play the game correctly, you know. And it's fun to interact with you. I never understand people in show business that refuse to sign autographs or don't want to meet the public. I, well, why are you in this business? I mean, it's the same thing you do for free that you get paid for. I realize that because what I used to do in school, what I used to do in college, when I got out, and then, I, oh, now I'm getting paid for it. So let's keep doing that. And I, I enjoy it. it. It's fun to interact with humans. I like that contact, you know, I like to see people's faces light up when they want some money or they, they were able to take care of a problem or whatever it might be. It, it just gives purpose, I think, to, to your life. All right. Well, Jay Leno and Kevin Eubanks, once again, together on the new comedy show, You Bet Your Life. It's going to be airing 2 o'clock weekdays on Fox Wilmington in southeastern North Carolina. Jay and Kevin, thank you so much for taking the time today. Well, thanks for taking the time, my friend. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take care, Jay. All right. Once again, a big thank you to Jay Leno and Kevin Eubanks for sparing some time and joining us here on the podcast to talk about the new show, You Bet Your Life. You'll be able to see it on Fox Wilmington starting September 13th. If you want to learn more about it, maybe become a contestant, go to YouBetYourLife.com. Plenty of social media accounts to follow, too, on Instagram and YouTube and Twitter. It's You Bet Your Life. And on Facebook, it's You Bet Your Life with Jay Leno. Looks like a fun show. Hope you get the chance to watch. Now, before we go, I'd like to ask you a favor. Please download and subscribe to the One-on-One -on -One with John Evans podcast on whatever app you use to listen to your favorite shows. And if you would be so kind, please leave us a rating or a review. Let us know what you think. The more feedback and kind words we have from folks like you, the higher we'll be listed on the apps and the better chance we'll have of bringing in even more new listeners. I'm John Evans. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of One on One.